Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly service. We're so glad that you tuned in. If you currently give to Church Home, we just want to say thank you. It's because of your donations that we are able to support Church Home community and that we are able to help deliver weekly messages to people all around the world. To partner with us on giving, you can text GENEROSITY to 97000 or visit churchhome.org. I'll be back for more announcements later. For now, enjoy the message. I definitely think Jesus is searching for people more than we're searching for Him. I definitely think that this entire universe is, this universe and universe is unknown are held together by the pursuit and priority of God, which is people. Um, I think He's constantly pursuing people, constantly wooing people. Um, and I think if we, in fact, are pursuing God, I think I think we are groping on this planet for a sense of meaning and purpose, and even a sense of grandeur. There's something beyond ourselves. And a lot of people over the millennia have d- discussed and debated, what is that? And I think it's just an innate God-given, built-in system that says there must be more. There has to be a reason we're here. There has to be a lake maker, a mountain maker, an animal maker a human maker. And if there is, I I want to know him. And so in a sense we are, but if in any way man pursues God, I truly have a conviction. It is because and a result of God first pursuing them. Hey church, we are here in Singapore and we've been doing a collection of talks entitled The Last Conversation. And what we're doing is we're investigating and studying together the last words of Jesus to his disciples. And naturally, of course, when you consider someone's last words on earth, as it were, there seems to be an importance. What really matters at the end of your life? What would be your last words? What are Jesus' last words to his disciples? And I want us to look at John chapter 15 and verse 12. Listen to these last, some of the last words of Jesus, some of the last commandments and encouragements of Jesus to his followers, specifically his disciples. He says this, I command you to love one another. I command you. One of the last words of Jesus was a commandment. I command you to love one another. Do those words kind of hit you today? You kind of feel a little overwhelmed and outmanned and outmatched. Like, how do I really love those around me? One of the most operative teachings of all of Jesus' teachings, or I should say one of the most paramount teachings of all of Jesus' teachings is love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, Jesus said the, all the law and the prophets and they're all, they come to this love God, love your neighbor, love. One of the overwhelming emphasis of all of Jesus' life and ministry and teaching was love. But here we are in his final moments, final conversations, final statements, final words with his disciples. And he says, I command you. He doesn't always command them, but here he says, I command you to love one another. Now, if you're anything like me, I read these commandments. I read these stark, strong words of Jesus, love one another. And I think to myself, man, I'm trying to brush my teeth every day. Now, I don't miss most days, but you know what I mean? Like there's arbitrary things in life. Balance my checkbook. Make sure that, you know, I get get an Uber for my wife. Make sure, in fact, right before we turned on the camera, I made dinner reservations to take my wife on a date. And yet here's the last words of Jesus commanding us love one another. Even those words, they kind of feel like love everybody. Love everybody all the time, anywhere, all the time, anywhere. It's just like, gosh, it's a little overwhelming. Trying to love maybe the person I married, or I'm trying to love my kids, or I'm trying to love my mom, or I'm trying to love my dad. I'm trying to love the one roommate I have, and you want me to love one another. Or maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, I'm just learning to love myself. How can I really do this? 
This entire segment, this entire episode is dedicated to encouraging you and encouraging myself to walk in love, to live a lifestyle of love, care, concern, empathy, listening, learning one with another from different ethnicities and cultural backgrounds and economic status and different portions and parts of the world. Jesus commands us with some of his last words, love one another. Are you already a little overwhelmed? I know I said it already, but I'm going to say it again. It's already a little much to be asked of you. I really mean it. I got things like I struggle with a little bit of an anger problem. And I say a little bit because it makes me feel better about myself. And I think, God, you want me to love the world? You want me to love people? You want me to love my neighbor? But I, I'm trying to not break golf clubs. Now, don't tell anyone I put this on camera, but, you know, Chelsea and I, my wife of nearly 23 years, we might have had a little bit of a discussion today, a little bit of a fight today. And she said some things and I said some things and she's like, you hurt my feelings. And I'm like, well, you hurt my feelings. And that's probably why I got dinner reservations tonight for a date <laughs> to make sure she's okay and that I love her and take care of her. and. Then you read John 15 and verse 12, and he's like, love one another. And you're like, I'm just trying to patch things up and make sure my wife knows that I love her. Jesus wants us to love the world. How are we going to do this? How is this possible? Better yet, how is this sustainable? I don't know about you, but I can have a good day of loving my neighbor. I can have a good couple of days. Sometimes I have a good week, but eventually you just get tired and weary and worn out and If you're like me, you know, sometimes my wife will be like, why don't you love me more? And my knee-jerk reaction isn't, will you forgive me? I love you. I need to love you better. It's typically, well, why don't you love me more? And all of a sudden, you have a selfish standoff. And yet, here we are again, doing a study in the last words of Jesus. And of course, there's overwhelming evidence that we're supposed to be people who are selfless loving, caring, and serving one another. So how are we going to do it? How are you going to do it? I mean, I don't, I'm not so sure we need another sermon or another talk about loving one another. You know how many messages and sermons I've heard over my lifetime of being in conventions and conferences and retreats and advances? We've been here in Singapore. It's been such an amazing trip and with Pastor Joseph Prince and New Creation Church. And we had such an amazing time. We had nights with young people. And man, we're encouraging young people to love one another, to love their neighbor. But oftentimes all those sermons amount to the sensation and overwhelming feeling that We can't keep it up. Not sure we can do it. And if you're like me, sometimes you just go, ah, forget it. I I can't do it. And I want to take the last few moments we have in this episode to show you how. I actually believe that the commands of Jesus are doable. Now, they're only doable and they're only realistic if we trust in him, go to him, and ask for his help. Now, the truth is, I've been holding out on you. Is I really have. John 15, 12, I didn't give you the whole verse, but now I'm about to, because the whole verse actually gives you the how. Here's how you're going to be a loving person. Here's how you're going to walk in love. I'm going to be bold enough to say it every day. You can do it. You can do it. But here's how you do it. Jesus said, I command you, love one another. Here it is. As I have loved you. That's where the power is. That's where the strength is. That's where the energy is. I mean, we're in Singapore, one of the great nations of the world. There are people all around in this open square, incredible and valuable human beings made by God. And you look around and you go, how can we all love each other? How will it be possible? It's overwhelming. Even sitting in my hotel room and looking out the window and seeing all the beautiful people here in Singapore. And you're thinking, God, How is this possible? I'll tell you how it's possible. As I have loved you. A lot of people believe that loving your neighbor and loving those around you is accomplished by focusing on loving your neighbor and loving those around you. But I would like to submit to you that the last words of Jesus 
shed light on a whole different angle and a whole different approach. That actually the impetus and the power and the energy and the strength for you to love those in your world, love those at your workplace, love those at your college, love those in your high school, in your middle school, wherever you are, love those around the water cooler and the break time at work. How are you going to love those by considering, rehearsing, and reminding yourself of how God loves you. And so, I want to remind you three ways God loves you. And by doing so, I believe you are going to receive renewed energy and strength and passion and purpose and intentionality to be moved towards those in your world and to love and to care and to serve them. How does God love us? Well, number one, he starts the romance. He starts the love, which is another way of saying he's the initiator. The Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. No greater love has anyone than to lay down his life for a friend. So the ultimate demonstration of love to the person of Jesus was initiated before we even believed while we were still sinners, the scripture says, which just sheds beautiful light on the reality that God is the initiator. God starts it. God's not sitting in heaven in his celestial throne waiting for you to make a move, waiting for you to show interest, waiting for you to read his book, waiting for you to pray to him. Well, once you talk to me, maybe I'll talk back. Once you read my book, maybe I'll reveal myself to you. No, he initiated. He starts. He steps out. That's how he loves you. God, you first love me. I love how how John says it. And this is love, not that you love God, but that he loved you and gave his son as a sacrifice for your selfishness and my selfishness, our sin. God's the initiator. You don't have to sustain this romance. God started the romance and he's going to sustain the romance. God starts the love. But John 3, 16, which is point number two, says for God, so love. So he doesn't just start the romance and start the loving relationship. He continues by so loving you. He doesn't just love you. He so loves you. Oh, sure, we can get into the original language and the meanings, but I think you and I both know what so loves me. It's one thing to love somebody, but to say, I so love you. Tonight on my date with Chelsea, I can promise you there'll be some so's before the love. Girl, I so love you. Please forgive me. Our fight today, that was awkward. I love you. I so love And that so simply means I am moved. I am passionate. I am focused. You have my attention. You have my heart. You have one of my favorite things Chelsea says to me is I've given you everything. I've given you my whole heart. God has given you his whole heart. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. He watches you over when you sleep. He counts the hairs on your head. He knew you before you were even conceived in your mother's womb, and he gave you your name. He so loves you. He starts the romance. He starts the love. He so loves you. And lastly, certainly this isn't exhaustive, but I believe it begins to shed light on the magnitude and depth of God's love for you and me. Lastly, he still loves us. He starts the love. He so loves us and he still loves us. And what does that mean? When we falter, when we fail, when we come up short, when we promise him in prayer, we're gonna always follow him and always love him, but we have a bad day or a bad week or a bad season and we do the very thing we promised or swore we would never do. I got good news. His love is enduring. One of my favorite qualities of God's love is it is long suffering. That means he suffers long. That means he'll go the long haul. I love to say it like this. God loves you the long way. God's love will never cease. It will not stop. In fact, fundamentally, God's love is never ending. It is unconditional and eternal by nature. He loves you. He's not going to stop. In fact, if you stop loving him, he won't stop loving you because he loved you before you loved him. That's where the power is. And you're thinking right now, maybe like I'm thinking like, how do I love people that way? 
I'm just telling you, when you focus on that kind of love, that supernatural, eternal love, it starts to give you perspective. It starts to give you energy and strength. You start to look past yourself and you start to care for your coworkers and care for your teammates and your roommates and your friends. You might even go to a family reunion and feel love and care for your odd uncle or your weird aunt. Why? Because you start to focus on God's love for you. I want to remind you what John says, in this is love, not that you love God, but that he loved you. Where's the focus? Where's the definition? Where's the culmination of love? It's in God's love for you. I'm going to make a bold statement. I'm going to make a very bold statement. Christianity is not about your love for God. Christianity is about God's love for you. That's the focus. That's the foundation. That's the bedrock. That's where the strength is. And that's where the power is. No wonder Jesus says, I'm commanding you. Think about it. You are commanded to love each other. But I want you to see it like this. Jesus is also commanding us in John 15, 12. I am commanding that you consider how I love you. You have a commandment today to sink into, to reconsider, to revisit and rehearse the extraordinary, extensive, eternal love God has for you. I hope you're exhaling right now. I hope you're giving yourself a little bit more credit. If your love has been lean, if your love has not been lasting, if you have been worn out in an effort of loving your family or your friends or your neighbor, I got good news. There is fresh energy and stamina and strength, a reinvigoration of love for your fellow man and those in your world by sinking into, reminding and considering again God's extraordinary, extensive love for you. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to our community, the opportunity to consider again your eternal teachings that change us forever. It's you, God. You're the source of all love. Everything good comes from you. Strengthen your people all over the world today. Strengthen them with these simple truths of who you are. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. And lastly, right here from Singapore, if you would like to make a decision to receive Jesus, to receive the forgiveness, the free forgiveness that only Jesus offers, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. You just simply say, I receive. Wherever you are watching, just say, I receive, and it's done. You are forgiven forever, and your life will never be the same. Let us know if we can serve you and help you. Reach out on Pastor Chat. We appreciate you so much, and I'm sure we'll talk soon, church. Love you. If you have questions about the message, about Jesus, or about community at Church Home, feel free to reach out on Pastor Chat. We have a team available to answer questions or to pray with you. Secondly, if you have said yes to Jesus or you want to learn more and grow in your faith, check out the daily guided prayers on the Church Home app or on the Church Home website. Lastly, we all know that Christmas is around the corner and we want to invite you on our journey in supporting families this season. Last year, we supported 3,200 kids and this year we want to do more. To join us, you can donate or deliver gifts. So you can reach out on churchhome.org to find ways that you can donate to our giving tree. $50 supports a child across the world or through our angel tree that helps support local communities and local schools. Uh, visit again churchhome.org or reach out to us on Pastor Chat to sign up and serve this season. We hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much again for tuning in. We love you.